it's itself. I don't know how to word that. Like, <laughs> is there a good way to word that? Yeah, so, so with this problem, this is, I would consider a difficulty one problem because it gave you the molarity of the hypochlorous acid and the sodium hypochlorite. And you just had to decide whether those values went in the numerator or the denominator. And in this case, the values are the same. So anytime you have the numerator and the denominator of that log fraction is the same, what's the log of one? Um, you guys can do it on your calculator if you want to, but what's the log of one? Um, zero. Zero. Yeah. So that means any time the ratio of the weak acid to the conjugate base is the same molarity, the pH equals the pKa. So that's a very helpful property to use. So, because you're going to use it as we work through the problems today and when we're going to be in lab tomorrow. So when the pH equals the pKa, the pH equals the pKa, when you have an equal concentration of the weak acid and the salt of the conjugate base. Okay, so, so that one straight up negative log 2.9 times negative 8 plus basically 0 equals 7.5. I have a question. Yes. Weren't you given the Ka value? So wouldn't you have to do like the 10 to the negative or 10 to the 2.9? No, no. So the, she was given the Ka to get the pKa. It's negative log of that Ka value. Okay. So remember, just like pH equals negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, pKa is negative log of the Ka. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing it now. But why, did, why did we put, like she put up at the top the 2.9 into the, the pH equation? So I think, I think we would edit the line up above and put in, uh, the, the third line down is the one that's, is the correct version of that. So she's missing the negative log part in front of the 2.9 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay. So I just threw this together before class. Well, before my meeting and then got to class. Nope, nope, nope. Don't put the negative there. Go, go back up to C6 and now go to the left. Put your cursor more to the left all the way in front of the 2.9, that's where we want to put the negative log value. There you go. Okay. And then put log and then open parentheses and closed around that 2.9. Ah, there, that's the way it should look. Okay, perfect, just like that. So negative log of 2.9 times 10 to the negative 8 plus basically the log of 1, which gives you 0. Excellent. Okay, so that was um, that was number 18. All right, All right, Siani, ready to do yours, number 15? Okay. How do I press share again? Uh, the green box at the bottom of the screen has a little, it says share screen with a big arrow. Beautiful. So this is number 15 that I had. Um, originally I had had the 0 0.58 on top because I read it wrong. So, but this is my sodium. I put the sodium borate on top and over top of the boric acid and it gave me 9.4. Perfect, All exactly. Right. So remember, every time that we're doing this, another difficulty one, look for the salt of the conjugate base or, because this is an acid this time, so we're looking for the salt of the conjugate base, that goes in the numerator. And then the weak acid goes in the denominator. So in this case, um, 
she already had the pKa of 9.24, so she didn't need to do anything else. So plug in the 9.24 plus the log of 0.824 divided by 0.58. Perfect. And you should get 9.4 when you do number 15. Another difficulty one, so um, no need to change the concentrations or anything. It's a very straight up, straightforward question. Perfect. All right. Abby, are you ready to do number 20? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is my question up here. And so I just took the negative log of the K and I got 7.5376 unrounded. And then use the Henderson Hessel block to find the pH. So the pKa plus the log of the CLO negative divided by the HCLO. And so I got 7.59. Perfect. So scroll up a little bit higher back up to your problem. So in this problem, again, a very straightforward difficulty one. So her sodium, a sodium hypochlorite is 0.4. That goes in the numerator. And then the hypochlorous acid, 0.35, goes in the denominator. Straight up, perfect, 7.59. Good. Excellent. OK, so Maddie is not here. So we'll have to get her to post that for us. And then, OK, so Emily Ann, let's do yours next. OK. Mm. Oh happening okay is it doing it yeah we can mm -hmm. skip okay well that's that um i did the ice chart but i could also just do the fiber same whatever thing at the bottom so <laughs> so so let's um can you blow up the screen just a little bit so we can um Ooh. perfect perfect yeah that's perfect perfect Great. So, so is, talk a little bit about why I had yours, why was yours a little bit more difficult? Um, I don't know. I think because just there's like base for acid and they're like different. I don't know. <laughs> right. So what's, what's class of compounds does ammonia belong in? I don't know. Come on, everybody, chime in. <laughs> it's a strong base? Not strong. Weak. Weak, right. So it's a weak base. And so you're going to be given KB values. Right. And so how do we alter the henderson hasselbach for to use KB values? Um. I thought they were the same thing or like you had to take something with like the one times 10 to the negative 14. Right. That's one technique. You can do that. So she could have done that early on and then used pKa's for the rest of the time and it would have equaled the pH. So I remember when you're doing the henderson hasselbach if you want to use the pKb, the formula will be the pOH equals the pKb plus the conjugate acid over the weak base. So remember that henderson hasselbach applies, the, the equation is very similar to when we use the pH, where we use the pKa. If you want to do the other version of the the henderson hasselbach it'll be the POH equals the PKB plus the log of the uh, conjugate acid over the weak base. So with her problem, she ended up finding that the POH was 4.367. And then the last step was to say 14 minus 4.367 gives you a pH of 
So is that a reasonable answer that if you're talking about a weak base that your pH would be 9.63? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the sign of confidence. <laughs> yeah, you need to sound confident, so we sound confident. Okay, all right. <laughs> yes, very good. So so I would definitely say this is a little more of like a difficulty two style because you didn't really have to do anything with your concentrations, but you did have to recognize that this is going to be a weak base situation instead of a weak acid situation. So this is one technique to solve it. You don't have to go as complicated as this to solve it. You can probably solve it two or three other ways. Um, so you can just, um, jump right down to doing the pH, uh, the, just jump down to doing the Henderson-Hasselbalch and then taking 14 minus that answer to get 9.63, or you could convert from pKb to pKa and then go from there. All right, sounds good. All right, Addison, you are next. Okay. Everybody see it? Yes? yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I still didn't fix these ones that we were talking about last night because okay. I don't I don't know what I did, but um basically I just had to order them. I don't have the homework problem up. I didn't think about um, that. Um if you let me see. I can do it really quick. If you, yeah, just open up your homework and so this problem is problem number 14, 14 in the homework. Yeah. So as, as she opens this up, this question uh, gave her five different buffer solutions. And she had to uh, rank those buffers is if you were in lab and you did these mixtures and then you put the pH probe in there, what would you have to rank them from the most basic, oh gosh, how did I end up doing that? Um, uh, from the most basic, I think, to the most acidic, I think is how you had to rank them. Yeah, it was just like increasing in pH. Okay, increasing pH, okay. So, um, so you had to um, first do the pH using the Henderson-Hasselbalch for all the solutions, and then you had to go back and rank them. Okay, okay here, this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so the one in gray on the left-hand side is the original one, so you can kind of ignore the blue for a second. So originally it was the stuff that's on the left. Okay. So do you want me to go back to my Excel? Yeah. Okay. So I wrote out all the things, and um, you basically just have to take the negative log of your um, your salt of the acid divided by the um, the original acid, and that that's all I really did. And then I just ordered them based on their um, like pH. So, so with this problem, you have one more step. What step, extra step, did you have to do that so far the other people didn't have to do? Um, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. What else did I not <laughs> do? <laughs> so actually, so look at your column C. And so when you did your column C, be careful. Oh, are you talking about how like I had different uh, volumes? Like, yes. Be careful, um, Addison, be careful that you have all of those should be times when you're doing the molarity times the volume will give you moles. Molarity times the volume? Yeah. Okay, I didn't do times the volume. That's probably why those last two are getting mixed up. So remember, when you calculate the number of moles, you need to do the molarity times the volume. So, um, so they should all be multiplying in here? Yeah, within those, yeah, within those should be multiplying, yeah. 
It's so weird that I got the same answer. As you, you did. Got. You got the same answer as I did. Yep. So with this problem, um, you, each problem had a different concentration and a different mole of uh, different volume, but they did set up a pattern. So they set it up as five different solutions, but actually there was two, there were sets. One set had the concentration of the weak acid um, opposite to the weak, the, the salt of the weak acid. So two sets of solutions, basically your numerator and denominator would flip over. And so you can see like for her, um, the one that's in row three and row five, they're exactly the same um, concentrations, but they flip flopped the volumes. And so when you flip flop the volumes, all you do is your fraction becomes upside down between number three and number five. So if it's a positive 0.477, if you flip the fraction upside down, the sign becomes negative 0.477. So in this problem, it seems like you have to do it five times, but you really don't have to do it five times. You really do it only uh, three times and there's a little pattern to the uh, to the rest of those buffers and it took me all the way to the very end before I hey, said hey wait a second I did that already and then I was like okay so it got a lot easier once you actually looked really closely at the solutions um it's still giving me like the incorrect order though okay so let's look at our order so when I did this one let's see where my order is here So let's see. So I had um, my most basic one was um, 0.1 molar HA and 5. Like, this is really weird now. So for me, I want the one that's most positive. So I, for me, my most positive one was 15 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium. 15 milliliters of oil. Yeah, why, so go to E. Let me see your column E, the formula for your column E. Oh, get rid of that negative sign. It's not the negative log. I thought you told me it was the negative no. log. No. Or at least you did. Not when you're doing the, um, not when you're doing that part of the henderson hasselbach It's plus the log of that. Now hit enter. Mm -hmm. oh. There you oh, go. Yeah. Now they'll all be fixed. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. So do I need to there take the negative out of my B column too? No, I mean, we don't really need, we don't really need B. It, 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 yes, technically you would go through and get rid of the negative in that, in column B also. Okay, so you get values like 0.477 for the like row five or yeah, mm -hmm. row five. So why why would I say 0.477 is the most basic? Because it's the highest, like it has the highest pH. Right, know. correct. It's got the highest pH value. So pretend this, you know, anonymous um, weak acid had a pKa of 6, 6.0. So at all of these numbers, you would have 6 plus 0.477 or 6 minus 0.477. So 6 plus 0.477 gives you 
about 6.5 as your pH, which is going to be the most basic of everything that's in there. So, so you should have, um, so the 0 0.477 is the most basic, and then the 0 0.301 is the next most basic, and then we have a zero. So let's look at our zero one. So why is, why is the number one come across as zero? Because you're taking the log of the same amount of acid and base. Exactly. So we had another situation. Yep. Another situation where the the conjugate base over the weak acid has a ratio of one. So the log of one is zero. And then we have the other two. We have our negative 0.3 and then our negative 0.47. Good. Okay. So that was definitely a little more challenging. But remember when you're going to go calculate the number of moles, it's going to be your molarity times your volume. And so I like to put it into moles, but you can put it into millimoles if you want. And so if you multiply the molarity times the milliliters, just straight up the way that is, that answer is millimoles. And so if you want to, you can use millimoles for these problems, but just remember if it asks you to go back to molarity, make sure you go back to the traditional molarity um, concentration. But millimoles is a very easy way to, to use, do these calculations as well. And it has a little bit less um, zeros in the, in the problem, so. I just wanted to check to make sure I had the right order for everybody. Okay. All right, good. And I think everybody's number 14 is the same. So I don't think we'll have to, um, I don't, I think everybody's the same. Okay, great. All right, so uh, let's go back to um, looking at some more of our notes for today. And um, we're gonna look at some of those um, slides we talked about the other day. So I think we left off talking about using the Le Chatelier's principle. Is that right where we left off? Um, we were just getting to the common ion effect. Okay, perfect. All right. So, um, so we have um, our equilibrium set up here. So what are the two components of this buffer? The uh, acetic acid and acetate ion. Correct. So we have acetic acid and the acetate ion. So one of the things we need to do today to practice is to set up things that are buffers and decide whether something is a buffer or not. So this is a buffer. So it's got a, on the left side of the reaction, we've got our weak acid. And on the right hand side, we've got the salt of our conjugate base, which is, or the acetate ion. So we added sodium acetate and it shifted the equilibrium to the left. And so when we said when it shifted the equilibrium to the left, what did we say happened to the pH? It was more basic. Right, yeah. it turned more basic. So remember, we got rid of some of this hydrogen ion here on the product side. So when we shifted left, then we became more uh, basic. So we went towards the um, acetic acid side. Okay, so when we do the, so when we do our, um, the official definition of the common ion effect is the extent of ionization of a weak electrolyte is decreased with the addition of a strong electrolyte that has an ion in common with the weak electrolyte. <sighs> So that's a rough definition right there. So you can see it's all in colors. So what I'm gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick apart the previous example and figure out what each of these is. Okay, so let's start with the weak electrolyte. What is the weak electrolyte in our previous example? Um, would it be the acetate? Nope, not ion? the acetate. 
acetic acid? Right, the acetic acid is the weak acid, which is also the weak electrolyte. So in that case, the acetic acid was our weak electrolyte. Okay, so it says that um, we need to have a strong electrolyte in there as well. So what was our strong electrolyte? The acetate ion. Right, or the sodium acetate, right. So the sodium acetate, so remember things that are salts are considered strong, and in this case they're considered a strong electrolyte. And then, then we have to have an ion in common. So what was our ion in common? Uh, is it water, like H plus? Nope. Does so what's our ion in common C between H these two? CO2? Nope. Wait, wait, say that again. The C2H3O2? Right, the acetate ion, right. So our acetate ion is our ion in common. So like I said, this is an example of Le Chatelier's principle. So remember Le Chatelier's principle says stress something and shift the equilibrium away from where you stressed it. So in this case, we're adding our acetate ion and shifting it left. So what about this part that says the extent of ionization is decreased? How did that, how did we show that part of this common ion effect? Um, when we went back towards the acetate ion? Is that what you're talking about? When we ba went back towards the acetic acid side. That's decreasing the weak electrolyte? It's decreasing the extent of ionization. Okay, so let's go back to our extent of ionization. Okay, so here's our situation. So when I look at this reaction, which side is more ionized? The right hand side or the left hand side? The left. More right. ionized. The right. <laughs> right. right hand side. It's got more ions. See, look, this is ionizing it. Oh, I just said it backwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like the one in ions. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> okay, so the right hand side is more ionization. So it says that in this case, with this common ion, it's going to shift it away from those ions. It becomes less ionized, which means in this case, it shifts left. But what that does is end up making the solution more basic. So just treat it straight up like a Le Chatelier's principle. In this case, I'm going to add the acetate ion, I'm going to shift left, and that that hydrogen ion concentration goes down and it becomes less ionized and now I'm going to be more basic. So that exa previous example has all of this part, these parts of this common ion effect. Okay, so when there are two sources of the same ion, and if the ion is involved in the equilibrium, the changes in the equilibrium is known as the common ion effect. Bah, 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 bah. So this little Excel at um, examples, you can click on that and that'll open an Excel file and it'll do all kinds of cool um, uh, ways to practice the common ion effect. So we're gonna do some practice with that and um, kind of work through the next couple of problems because um, we need to do some more work with these buffers. So we already know the common ion effect is an example of the Le Chatelier's principle. It is a specific example of Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so we have this situation. We have our same old acetic acid sodium acetate buffer. And um, when a strong electrolyte is added, the weak electrolyte ionizes less just exactly what we did. So by doing that, we've decreased the hydrogen ion concentration and we know that that makes the value of the pH increase, oops, go back, which means it becomes more basic. Okay. 
And so we're going to see this. We know this is going to happen, but we need to, um, we're going to do some problems where we're going to mathematically prove that that happens. So we're going to mathematically prove using the Henderson Hasselbalch that that's true. Okay. So a quick little review from chapter 16. Let's do this one. And that reminds me, there are a couple questions. I think it's like mm, 24, 25, somewhere in the homework. There's a couple little review from chapter, from the previous chapter. Actually, it's not this. I don't know why it's, anyway, it's from the weak acid chapter, which I don't think was 16. But anyway, just ignore the chapter number. So let's do this one real quick. Quick little review. How am I going to solve this one? Uh, uh, Feels like a long time ago. Yeah. We wouldn't do it like we would. We were doing these last ones. So. So, are we allowed to use Henderson Hasselbach with this? I don't know. Yes, because isn't it a buffer? It, that's the question. Is this a buffer? If I take oh. just just acetic acid by itself, is that a buffer? Mm, probably not. Nope, not. What else do would I need? Do like the, would you do quadratic for this? Yes, you might need the quadratic, but we can we can start off and just see if we need it. So the Ka equals what? 1.8 times 10 to the fifth. Mm -hmm. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And then that equals what? What's going to be in the numerator of my frac of my? Like the salt? Like, I don't know. There's supposed to be like something above the other thing. No, no. Remember when we did in the previous chapter, we would have the E row of our ice, or the E row of our chart, mm -hmm. and that would be the hydrogen ion and the acetate ion, and those would each be X, and then the denominator would be the concentration of the solution minus X, and mm -hmm. we'll drop drop that X if we can do the five percent rule. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and solve for um, solve for x in this situation. So you have 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Oops, oh, you probably you guys can already see it. But. So solve for x. Okay, did everybody get 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3? Yes. Um, okay. yeah. So, but what does X actually represent in this, in this situation? The hydrogen ion. Right, X is the hydrogen ion concentration. And so I needed the hydrogen ion concentration here because the question's asking me for pH. So I need the hydrogen ion concentration. So go ahead and solve and give me the pH for a solution that's 1.34 times 10 to the negative 3 molar hydrogen ion. Okay, what'd you get? I got 2.9. Yeah, 2.87. Yeah, I just made it 2 instead of 3. Okay. Do we have to do the times 100 thingy? So, uh, so if you're going to prove, so remember this part is to do the, uh, the, the 5% rule. So good, good idea to just go back and check 
to make sure that that 5% rule is still valid. But it is in this case, so we're good to drop that, not have to do the quadratic if you don't want to. So remember, so this, this is the way we did it in the previous chapter because we did not have a buffer. We just had a straight up acetic acid solution. So we had to use the E row of our ice chart and we saw that the pattern became that the products over the reactants was going to be X squared over the concentration of the solution minus X and then see if you can do the 5% rule. So that's the way we did it last chapter. So now we need to uh, use those same ideas and start to incorporate a buffer. But if I'm going to change the pH of a buffer, I need to go back and start thinking about a nice chart again. So for that problem, did we do 1.34 times 10 to the negative third over top of what? No, 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 no. Remember, this is the hydrogen ion concentration. Uh -huh. So this is the hydrogen ion concentration. So we did negative log of this number. And that's how we got pH. So no Henderson Hasselbach because this is not a um, this is not a buffer. So you can't use Henderson Hasselbach. But I still need to do the pH. Mm -hmm. So I solved for X and X in these situations is the hydrogen ion concentration mm -hmm. and the acetate ion. Mm -hmm. Look over. The acetic acid concentration. So this was from the E row of ice chart. Yeah, okay, okay. So you might want to go back and look at those, look at that stuff from before break. So, uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a situation where we have um, a acetic acid solution, but now we're going to add some sodium acetate. So I, in my row, I've got my molarity is 0.1 for my, so where did this hydrogen ion come from? The last problem? Yep, come from the last problem. So we got the hydrogen ion concentration from our last problem, told us what the pH was. And we're going to get, oops, sorry, go back one. So we need to figure out what this acetate ion concentration is going to be. So what's that acetate ion concentration going to be? Um. Is it going to be 0 0.05134? Mm -hmm, exactly. So it's going to be the sum of 0 0.05 molar and the sum of my acid. So what's going to happen in this change row? Which way will the equilibrium shift? To the... I think to the right. Just kidding. <laughs> How about to the left? That's my second option. <laughs> so the common ion effect says that if I add something to the left, it's going to shift to the right. Because when I added my sodium acetate, that was something that was on the right hand side of my equilibrium and so it's going to shift left. So my left side will go up and my right side will go down. OK. 
get something that looks like Wait, that. what did you say about the ion effect? Like, if you increase what? So in this case, I added acetate ion, which is an ion on the right-hand side of my equation. So since I added something to the right-hand side, my equilibrium shifts left. So the, when I added sodium acetate, the acetate ion was my ion in common. Mm -hmm. So I added something to the left, or sorry, I added something to the right and I shifted left. So now I get this equilibrium that's got some X's in it. So, oh my goodness. What the heck is that? That, gra that <laughs> graphic doesn't look very good. The graphic on the one note is fine. This graphic <laughs> is a little screwy. <laughs> You're supposed to say 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. <laughs> yeah, it, it lost my whole fraction. Let me go see if it's... Let me see if it's um let me see if it's any better on my um let's see if it's any better on one note. Huh? Yeah, it's a lot better on one note. Okay, can you guys see one note open now? Not yet, no. no. Okay, let me start. Yes. Okay, so this is the way it should, the typesetting should be. So we have our Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative five. And then we have our numerator, is the two um, things that are on the right hand side and then our denominator will be the acetic acid on the left hand side. So in this problem we don't have any choice we really need to solve um, the quadratic equation. So um, again if you have oh that's gonna be rough to think about how to do that if you wanted to solve the quadratic equation with like using my style calculator where you just use the hmm, I have to think about that but so if you use my style calculator you can just plug in the 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 on the left and then the whole fraction on the right hand side and so um, when you do that, you will get X is two answers. You'll get X is 0 0.0513 and you'll get X is 0 0.001301. So which one of those two is the correct value for X? 0 0.0013. Correct. So how do we distinguish that 0 0.05 is not the correct answer? Um, you can just subtract. Mm -hmm. Yep, so if you go up to the hydrogen ion concentration, you get 1.34 times 10 to the negative 3 minus x. And if you try to subtract 0.05 off of that, you're going to get a negative value. So that value, so the correct value for x is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3. So do that, do that, um, calculation for the hydrogen ion concentration. So 1.34 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 and you will get 3.7 times 10 to the negative 5. Mm -hmm. And now go ahead and plug that into the negative log and solve for the pH. So did you get 4.43? Um, yeah. 
So negative no, log, a negative log of 3.7 times 10 to the negative 5. Yep, you should get 4.43. So was that true? Was the common ion effect true? Did we go towards less ionization in our ice chart? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What she said. So when we have this equation that's on the top of our ice chart, mm -hmm. which side is the ionization side? More ion is ionized, the left side or the right side? The right correct the right side so did we shift towards less ionization i don't know i guess i don't know how the value would show that so look in your look in your change row mm -hmm. did so we guess because it increased in ph which means it's more basic correct yep that's one way to look at it is it we went from 2.87 to 4.43 so it became more basic so that's that was part of the definition it said it had to become more basic and then the other part of the definition is says it shifts away from the things that are ionized so it's shifted left and so in our ice chart we saw it shift left because the right hand side has minus x's and the left hand side has plus x's yeah okay good all right wait I, wait, wait wait stop that really quick okay yes thank you I'm just doing it right off of one note, so this is already there. So do you, can we can we spend a few more minutes? You guys have a few more minutes to do the next little bit. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is that okay, Emily Ann? Yeah. Uh, Hannah. Yeah. Hannah. Hannah. Good. Abby. Good. Mm-hmm. I really have a hot date to get to, but <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a Zoom date. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. invite them. Invite them to the chat. Exactly. Hey, I've seen um my sons um the their the choir at their school. They all met on Zoom and they did this big song where they all sang together. It was really cute. There was like 30 of them all, all together singing. It was really cute. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, okay. no. What okay. we do. We can continue. All right. Are we going to start a choir now? <laughs> oh, God. Start Maybe singing. you guys, not me. <laughs> you guys don't ever, ever want to hear me sing. <laughs> no, I think I do. <laughs> um yeah that would not be good although when i was in high school i was in the musical so at least i can be in a chorus i can't be as a, the main singer but i can do the well chorus. well in that case just bring your son over and have a duet <laughs> we'll do show and tell <laughs> do show. we had show we had pet show and tell the other day so <laughs> that's true we, we have we have uh so Chemistry ends at 11.50 and the talent show starts at 11.51. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Back to our little situation here. Okay. Let me go see if that PowerPoint is better now that, um, now that we're past that screen. Okay, so one of the things we need to pay attention to is um, if I have this buffer, if it's a true buffer, I can add an acid or a base, a strong acid or a strong base to the buffer without changing it dramatically. Okay. Do you guys see that I'm on PowerPoint now? No. Okay, well, I knew mm -hmm. you guys were like, what are, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. 
Cool. Let's try it again. <laughs> and now we're back to me again. <laughs> there we go. We don't need to see me. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to be, um, we're going to be adding a strong acid or a strong base to our buffer. Okay. So we're the, remember the whole idea of a buffer is that we're not going to be able to, we want to add it acid or base without changing the pH dramatically, but remember there's a limit, so you can't you just add a whole bunch of acid. So, um, so this is what we're going to do. This is going to be our plan. Okay, so let's start with the far left hand side. We have a buffer. And so on the, the homework problem that I'm giving you guys for Thursday, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, is it a buffer? So you're going to be, um, you're going to be doing this problem. We have to add, you have to decide whether there's a buffer or not. So how do, do we, you, how do we decide if it's a buffer or not? So the first thing, the first clue for buffers is there's going to be a weak acid and the salt of the conjugate base. Oh, that's awesome. Emily <laughs> Ann, you're awesome. <laughs> Emily okay. Ann, there's no traveling right now. <laughs> Whatever. I have to, that would, that's what we can do for Thursday is, um, is do um, virtual backgrounds. Okay. How do you do that? Just, so just pick it. You can. Is it under the preferences for the no, virtual background? It's on the, um, it was like it's like little... where it says like stop video at the bottom. There's like a little up arrow beside it. Okay, add to space. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh yeah, there's the choose virtual background. Yep. Is it the little LCD? <laughs> yeah, no, you're not even on it. <laughs> You're, yeah, there you go. The light was the light was it. The lighting. <laughs> You're you're kind of in space, but you have this big sun over your shoulder. <laughs> okay. My grass. But Hannah, you have to be in your grass. Hold on, I'm coming. Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh wait, where'd I go? Where's my grass? <laughs> Grass? Grass? What the? <laughs> I guess the I guess the new thing you do is you videotape yourself walking in to the camera and then when you sit down you can play the video of you walking in on yourself. Like you can you can appear from the door in the middle. <laughs> While you're sitting at the desk, you can appear in the door. Anyway, people have a whole lot of time on their hands. <laughs> they just yeah. are not. Hi, guys. Oh, you're upside down now. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. I like it. Okay, I like I like the Golden Gate Bridge too. That looks pretty. Okay, all right. Let's get back to our. Um, okay, so we're on the left hand side. So the first criteria. So remember those those four those four um, things that we have to decide whether we're a buffer or not. And so the first one is, are you a weak acid and the salt of the conjugate base? And um, so the other thing that you need to say is, are you maybe a weak acid and a strong base? So write out the equilibrium that you have between the components that you're given. And if you end up having a uh, weak acid and the salt of the conjugate base as a result, then you do have a buffer. So let's do, if we want to take a second, we can, um, we can do one real quick. Okay. Um, let's do just a whiteboard. Okay, so this is, um, whoever has number four, this is one of yours. Okay, so this question says, do I have... Number four, do you mean like a different one? Because we all have to do number four. Wait, where are the new problems? 
Oh no, this is um this is Addison. This is your number four. Or this sorry, this is one of yours from Addison. This is one from yours. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that Addison is asked is this question. So these two are mixed together and the question is, first question is, oops, sorry, that's, that's an F. The first question is, is this a buffer? So I need to write the products. Okay, so what are my products? Um, is it KCL04 and HF? Yep, HF. And KCL04, perfect. So now, as I go through and I'm gonna, later on, I'm gonna be making an ice chart. <clears throat> Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, but after when I'm done, I'm going to be doing the Henderson Hasselbach. Hmm, I don't know how to spell that one, but and I'm going to say the pH equals the pKa, which for this problem I don't really care about. Wait. So does that mean it is a buffer? Yes, it is a buffer. So why is it a buffer? Well, that's why I was asking. <laughs> which component? Which components make it a buffer? Is it the K? Like that makes it the salt of the thing, and the H ClO four makes it the acid. So I have a. So is this? Is this perchloric acid considered a weak acid or is the HF the weak acid? The perchloric. Perchloric is weak acid. No. What? The other oh. way. HF. Oh. So this HClO4, this is one of the super seven. This is one that of those. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because how would an HF ionize better than HClO4? It doesn't. HF is a weak acid. HF is the weak acid and the KF is the salt of the conjugate base. Uh, this is what strong. I'm saying is wouldn't it normally just do HF is equal to H plus plus F minus or whatever? Wouldn't it ionize completely, which means it would be a strong acid? Not you no, know, HF is a weak acid. So if I was going to do the HF, if I was going to do the HF equilibrium, I would have HF, but it would be a, it would be a, um, it would be like this, where if I was going to do the perchloric acid, it would only be a forward arrow. Okay. So this is a strong acid. Ugh, I can't type. and this is a weak acid. So I'm taking, so this, this does create a buffer because even though I have, a strong, I have a strong acid and then I have the salt of a conjugate base. So the two components that I would use for the Henderson-Hasselbach would be the KF and the HF. And so my numerator would be my KF concentration and my HF would be in my denominator. So
so so that that's why this when when you guys were working on it i realized that we hadn't done like enough of it to finish it so so when you when you're asked to put the two mix the two things together see what you get on the other side if you get a weak acid and the salt of the conjugate base as two components then you can say yes this is a buffer and then you can go ahead and finish so Addison another one from yours is this one So what's the products on that reaction? Um, HNO2 and KCO. Okay, so what kind of arrow do I put in between these two? Is this an equilibrium? Do I have, do I have a buffer? Um. <laughs> Yeah. So do I have do I have a weak acid? No, you have a strong acid. Okay, so I have a strong acid. HCl is a strong acid, but nitrous acid is actually a weak acid. Okay. But do but do I have the other half? Do I have the salt of the conjugate base? Um, so yes. so if this is my weak acid. So if that one's my weak acid, mm -hmm. do where is the salt of the conjugate base? Is it the KNO2? Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah. Yes. Ugh. I can't, I can't get, I can't get it to draw. There we go. Okay. Hmm, let's actually go look whether nitrous acid is a weak acid. Hold on one sec. Let's go check that out. We need to check that out. I have a feeling it's not. Hold on, let's go check. Okay, so while I go check that one out, you guys do this one. Ah, I can't type. Okay, decide whether that one is the buffer. And I will go back and get my, I will go look this up real quick. Yep, nitrous acid is a weak acid. Okay, okay. Okay, yep, so that's gonna create a buffer. So what about this last one? What about this acetic acid and water? I would say no, it's not a buffer. Correct. 
So that one is. So we're identifying if it's a buffer or not. Uh, yes, because yeah, because the first part of this question says um, part of part of the thing you have to do for the problem is first decide whether it's a buffer. Then you can go ahead and answer the question. So that one is yes. If I could try to copy this one. Nope, it's not letting me. But this one is no. Okay, so that one, so this first one's a yes. The second one is a yes. The third one is a no. And let me see if I can find another one in here that you guys might have trouble with. Um, let's do, okay, let's do this one. Okay, let's decide whether that one is a buffer. No. Okay, so what are our products? Br minus and NH4 plus. So ammonium bromide is actually our product. So the question is, do I have the two components I need? So in this case, what is a, which um, class of compounds does ammonia belong to? Um, is that a base? Mm -hmm. Yep, so ammonia is the weak base. So, so here's my weak base. Now I need the salt of my conjugate acid. Um, it would probably be the NH or VR, right? <laughs> yeah, you got, you got it. So this is the... Can you explain why that would be the salt? So, um, so remember when we start with ammonia, so let's do the reaction. So if ammonia is a base, what will my conjugate acid look like? So this is my weak base. NH4. Right, so NH4 plus. This is my conjugate acid. Mm -hmm. And so if that's my conjugate acid, then the BR acts as the salt? Right, exactly. So the salt I'm going to make is with my NH4 plus and my BR minus becomes my salt. So... So NH4Br, that will be my salt. So it's the ammonium ion is the conjugate acid mm -hmm. and my salt is the ammonium bromide. Okay. This, this word, this conjugate acid needs to go underneath NH4. Oops, oh well. Okay.
Okay, so that one is a buffer also. So we get to say yes for that one. So we, we want to, we tend to do a lot of weak acid, salt of the conjugate base versions, but just remember there's also the weak base and salt of the conjugate acid. So this ammonium, ammonium bromide example, that's the example of using a weak base as a buffer. Okay. All right. So let's see. Wow, it's getting kind of late. Okay. So um, let's just stop for today. Maybe during uh, the time we have for lab tomorrow, I'll spend a few minutes and talk about how to finish the problems where we add a little bit of acid or base to it. You can look ahead in the notes if you want, or you look ahead in the um, in the uh, the OneNote notes if you want to. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about it tomorrow in lab. So, and the other problems that we have to do is just one through six. Were those the only ones, or are there another? No, assignment? no. You you were assigned. You were assigned one of them. So Please. let's see, Siani, you're number twelve. Oh, okay. Okay. So the number 12 that I originally assigned you was too yeah. hard. It was past what we were doing. The, the questions were in the wrong order. Like 18, 19, 20 should have been up as 10, 11, and 12. So, but, okay. So Siani, you were 12. Hannah, you were 13. Um, Abby, you were nine. Emily Ann, you're eight. And Addison, you are seven. Okay, so um, after we go, after we get through lab tomorrow, we'll decide whether you guys have enough information to do those problems for class on Thursday or class on Friday. So we'll know for sure. So tomorrow, so tomorrow is a uh, lab at nine thirty. Is nine thirty okay for you guys? Is I want to try to keep a, a good schedule, but. Yeah, okay. Okay. okay, all right, we'll just do. So tomorrow for lab, um, just do your pre-lab like you normally would. And we're gonna go through and I'm gonna give you, um, I'm gonna uh, give you some data that you guys are gonna use for as if you had done it in lab. And okay. so um, we'll be able to basically do everything that you would have done, just you won't be standing there doing it in lab. But I did have time to go do the radioactivity lab when I went to school the other day. So um, we'll have a little bit of live, a little bit of, of live data for the radioactivity lab. So, yeah. and I'm not allowed to go back to school. So I won't be able to do, I wanted to do the electrochemistry lab also, but I didn't, I ran out of time. So they banned me. They banned me. I have to get security to let me in. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I guess I, I guess I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I see you purchasing weird things on Amazon. Exactly. You'd be like, um, why do you need a lab quest? And why do you need a pH probe? And why? you're like, uh, oh, well, uh, <laughs> it's home chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So, st um, so fill in the next couple slides um, on uh, from OneNote, and uh, do your pre-lab for tomorrow, and then I will get um, all of your data ready so that we can pretend like you did the titration. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow at nine thirty. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. bye. bye.